Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Personalization at Scale, Designing Incredible Customer Experiences with Salesforce and Sitecore. My name is Taylor Price, and I lead product marketing and go-to-market for Blue Wolf, an IBM company. I'm joined by two incredible speakers here today to dive into an important topic uh, around content marketing and personalization that we hope is gonna be valuable and insightful for everybody here today. So without further ado, I'd love to introduce um, my colleague here at Blue Wolf, Ryan McCambridge, who is our Global Director of Digital Engagement. He also leads our marketing cloud and marketing services practice at Blue Wolf. Um, and then from the Sitecore family, uh, we're very pleased to have Mike Shaw, Platform Product Marketing Manager. So before we dive into the content, I'm just gonna give a quick little overview of the agenda of our discussion here today. So first off, we're gonna give a little bit of background into the Blue Wolf and Sitecore partnership and really what that means. Um, then we're gonna talk about some of the challenges that organizations are facing today around personalization in the midst of uh, this exponential growth of new channels and the new channels that are popping up all the time. Um, we're then gonna talk a little bit about how to start thinking about data and making data actionable, which is really the first step uh, in any content uh, marketing, content uh, personalization strategy. Um, we'll talk a little bit about um, creating more efficient content management strategies and designing a process around personalization. Uh, and then we'll finish off with a discussion around integrating your different marketing systems um, to support your content marketing strategy, specifically talking about how Salesforce and Sitecore work together. Um, and then, of course, we'll finish up with a QA. and uh, a Please, as we progress through the webinar, type your questions into the chat. Uh, any questions that we are not able to answer uh, during this webinar, we will uh, send out uh, responses via email um, after the fact. So don't fret, your questions will be answered. Um, so first, let's dive into a little discussion around um, the partnership, the Blue Wolf and Sitecore partnership. So for anyone here that might not know about Blue Wolf, um, Blue Wolf is a global Salesforce consultancy that sits inside of IBM and specifically inside of IBM IX, which is um, one of the world's leading digital agencies. So earlier this year, IBM IX and Sitecore announced a new strategic partnership. Um, and this is really bringing together the full depth and breadth of IBM IX's capabilities, which includes uh, Blue Wolf's Salesforce expertise um, to deploy really innovative and integrated solutions uh, on the Sitecore platform. Um, so very exciting stuff. And um, Sitecore and Salesforce, of course, also have a strategic alliance and have for some time. Um, and our speakers are gonna be diving more into that and what that means and what that looks like on this webinar. So um, we're gonna dive into content. I am so pleased again to introduce our fabulous speakers, Ryan and Mike, please take it away. Thank you, Taylor. And Mike, welcome. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us today about this Thank topic you. that I think is on the forefront of, of a lot of people's minds. And I wanna start with this slide because you know what this slide just, it really articulates that what a time to be alive as a marketer, right? Look at all these fun, exciting channels that the consumers are engaging in and all this new tech that is coming to the marketplace, whether that's voice or chat or internet of things, um, technology, mobile, of course, we're all on our mobile devices, but what a time to be alive as a marketer, right? How do I get to my consumer in those devices? And guess what? They don't give us a break, Mike. They expect us to be there as soon as, the, as, soon as these things hit the market. That's for sure. That's for and, sure. And the thing that's crazy about these new channels is they're more and more intimate, right, Mike? I mean, would you agree with that? Like, the more and more that you get into these things, the more and more personal they become. You know, I was reading some articles about the Apple Watch and just how Apple is taking the perspective of this is going to be a life-saving device. How, how much more personal can you get on a device um, than something like that? But as a marketer, that just poses a new level of anxiety of how do I bring my content strategy at such a highly personal level to those devices as those devices are coming out and disrupting the, the marketplace at a pace that we've never seen. And, and 
that pace isn't going to slow down. It's just not going to slow down. It's going to speed up. And the reality is there's only one true way to get ahead of this, and that is making sure that you have a platform that enables you to spin these new technologies up at scale. And so it'll be interesting as we talk through this session, as we kind of uncover what are those tenants that help them do that. But I would love to get your take a little bit more on the content component of this. Like, what is the life cycle that a marketer should be thinking about as these channels continue to pop up on, on a diagram like this, Mike? Absolutely. Uh, and thanks again for having me here today, Ryan. I really do love this slide too. I really think it shows that that idea that you know consumers are engaging where they want to engage, not where you want them to engage anymore. And it's important from a brand's perspective to to meet your consumers where they are. Uh, you know, and they expect, like you said, this intimate level across all devices. The same way how you and I are chatting now on this webcast. I don't forget who you are when we're in person or on a phone meeting later. I'm going to remember that experience and take that with me as we go, making sure every time we interact, it's more personal. So what customers and consumers are expecting today. And it's interesting you bring up the content workflow because this is the core or one of the real cruxes that we see in customers today. We marketers and especially content marketers, we want to live in a linear process, right? Where we think, you know, we start the project, we'll do a kickoff, we'll move there, we'll define our strategies, our milestones, all the important things, start gathering our content, creating content we don't have, we'll test, we'll review and approve, right? And then might circle, iterate a few times because things, you know, maybe reviewing designs or, or iterating content or copy. Uh, then we finally hit production. Now we're publishing our content. And this is where we really want to you know, get legs under us. We want to be able to test, optimize, and iterate consistently and always update. And we like to think that the, our process is linear like this, very easy, straightforward, step by step by step. Except the problem here is that it, this doesn't represent the customer journey, which you just showed in the last slide. So marketing organizations have this situation where they have a content life cycle or a content almost supply chain that's not matching the way their customers and their consumers are actually engaging the content. And we found that, you know, at Sitecore, it more looks like this, where you're going through your content cycle and you're going from your, your kickoff to your mile, to your strategy, from your strategy to your content creation, and then approvals, testing and publish. But there's this continuous cycle where, you know, you could approve and then you're moving from the approval phase back to content creation. And then there's a strong connection between your testing and optimizing to your creating and, cre and curating new content, creating this almost cyclical or cyclical process of just content optimization and intelligence. And this is the process that winning organizations are doing today. So marketing organizations that lack the adoptions of any of this kind of almost intelligent content processes result in a really poor personalization and a, a siloed or disjointed system process where they're not using a core MarTech stack, a core tech stack uh, that allows them to actually execute against their strategies. And this is a huge roadblock that I see customers hit today. I'm, I'm assuming, Ryan, you probably see the similar things in your Blue Wolf side as well. Uh, absolutely, Mike. And what's interesting is that actually kind of brings a, a level of angst, I think, to marketing organizations to a point where as we have asked and reached out to our customers about how confident they feel that they're delivering on that promise of a highly personalized experience, only 15% of them feel that they are. And that's that really kind of feels staggering to me. Um, but does that shock you at all that only 15% of marketers feel like that they're delivering at that level, Mike? No, I don't think so. Like when you think, when you take into account, right, the number of channels you showed on that first slide, the number of personas across those channels, and then the limitations they face first in people, process, and organization before they get even into you know, their MarTech stack, it's not really a surprise that 15% of them are confident because there's, so, there's more that I don't know than I do know when it comes to getting it right. Uh, so it's really that process. Uh, we're going to talk about it now going forward, but it's putting together that process to overcome this lack of confidence they have in the organization. That's for sure uh, yeah. is the issue. Interesting is, you know, we're talking about this from a personalization standpoint. So let's just say you're hitting some of those spokes on that hub, but it's not a consistent personalized experience across all those spokes. That's really what the consumer expects. 
what I yep. see on my iPad, I'm seeing on the website. And what I'm seeing on the website, I'm seeing in my app. So how do you get there? And it really kind of comes down to two key tenants. One is data and the other is content. And what's interesting is I think a lot of us understand the data problem. We understand that um, we have to understand who our consumers are in order to be able to reach them in the way that we wanna reach them. But in a lot of ways, we struggle to be able to do that. And why? It's because we have a, a MarTech architecture that typically looks like this. You have your consumer who you're engaging in all these channels at the top, and then you have all of these systems of engagement or um, insights that you're collecting, whether that's how are they responding to online advertising? How are they uh, talking about our brand in the social sphere? Are they engaged with our email programs? Are they buying things online or in our brick and mortar stores? Um, what kind of content really cap captivates them and engages them? What are the insights that we're gaining out of them? And then ultimately, what is what are the demographic details that we know about our consumers? And all of these data points don't live in a single system of record where you can pull from and really gain that insightful knowledge. And again, it comes down to we don't need more data. At the end of the day, we have more data now than we've ever had in the history of mankind. That number there is 2.5 quintillion bytes of data that were being produced every single day. Data is not the problem. The problem is understanding and building personas and clusters on that data. And again, the main issue is that we have bifurcated and siloed and segmented systems. What's really interesting and, and impactful when you really start to think about the synergies that Salesforce's platform brings as a unified integrated platform and then this strategic relationship that Sitecore has really uh, taken to and seen the opportunity is to bring about that meaningful engagement data on the web properties that your consumers are having and interlacing that, what I like to call that digital fingerprint of those interactions that your consumer's having across your brands and unifying that data into a platform that allows you to gain those insights. And those insights will then allow you to then decide at scale, what are the highly personalized targeted messages and channels that are gonna resonate with your consumers? So do we have a data problem? Yes, it's not that we have too, too, too little data, it's we have too much data and it's in too many different places. So unifying that data, investing in a MarTech stack that allows the marketer to see that data, glean insights from that data and stitch together the DNA of your consumer allows you to get to that logical next step, which is what is the content that I give my consumer in what channel? Yep, absolutely. I think, you know, if you're not able to capture and understand the, the data and the customer journey, how do you ever know what you want to communicate at the right point in time? Right. And I think that's really where you come to the second piece of the puzzle now, which is the content piece. Right. So using that data uh, and the actionable insights you're gathering to actually show content when it matters, when it's actually going to have impact. Uh, so a lot of companies are facing big problems here where they have an they have enough data, they don't have insights, but what they're actually lacking on the content side is content. They just pure do not have enough content to fill all the needs and all the personas and channels and stuff that they have. So marketing teams, they need to start getting smart around this. They need to get smart around content management and delivery to overcome this hurdle because no marketing organization has enough people or enough budget to, to, uh, to write all the content at the same time. So if I had to give three steps, it really here starts with the customers, right? Understanding your customers and their journeys, their needs, their desires, it's gonna help you create and craft the right messages, right? And this goes to that digital uh, fingerprint you were just talking about, where you can leverage the combination of the Sitecore platform to, to deliver and to 
optimize on the content, but use things like this, the Salesforce journey builder to start building out your user journeys, determining when certain content should be shown, maybe where an email should be sent and using that as analytics to improve the process, right? Uh, us marketers know, talk all the time about micro moments and how important it is to get it right. With a tool like journey builder, we're able to first actually look at the customer journey, identify the individual points in time that we want to target with personalization, and then use Sitecore to actually target and deliver that content to them. The second thing I would probably talk about is the idea of centralization of all your content management and your delivery. I'm going to go into an example in a little bit about this, but I think it's easy to, to say that disjointed systems hamper growth. And if you don't have an area where you're managing all your content in one spot so you can share it and deliver it across channels, across visitors, across divisions, you're never going to have synergy in your organization. You're always going to hit this wall where I need more content to deliver in my personalized scenarios, but I need to go talk to this other organization or it's on a different website or it's in uh, you know, maybe a digital asset management system elsewhere. You need to start, start breaking down the silos and putting them all together. And then finally, it's putting the pieces of that data we talked about in the beginning, that first bullet, and the second bullet of uh, actually having processes around your content management, unifying that together to really power your personalization. Because again, personalization is really just based on a data point you know, giving them content you think is going to provide the next great step for them. So here's where the Sitecore piece really comes into play, because we're able to leverage all the strategies and insights an organization might have all the information and all the strategy they might have done on Salesforce or with a partner like Blue Wolf and leverage that in the content marketing and deliver that for personalization at scale. So when you're integrating and, and you're integrating, you're breaking down your silos and you're starting to think about your users across their lifetime and how you can influence change, you're going to start to get this idea of a more accelerated uh, and integrated marketing strategy. And that's what I know, Ryan, that, that you're uh, pretty keen on on the Blue Wolf side and that um, works pretty well for, for in your, from your experience. No, totally. And part of our state of Salesforce report, we've a, we asked this question about how marketers are thinking about evolving their technology and their data strategy. And marketers that take an integrated technology approach are 49% more likely to excel in delivering those personalized experiences. And I think that just reinforces exactly what you're saying, Mike. Mm -hmm. So do you have an example that you could share of somebody who's been doing this um, on, on the Sitecore side? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna give an example now about a um, company that was kind of facing this exact issue where they just didn't have integrated technologies, right? So um, they're a healthcare provider in the US uh, that had three web solutions, right? They were all in legacy in a legacy CMS. Um, and while there were three great properties, there were beautiful websites that were engaging to their visitors and produced business results, it left them wanting. It didn't give them that single pane of glass so they manage their content, their marketing. It was very siloed. Again, uh, these are three systems that they didn't talk to each other. So none of the websites talked to one another, so they couldn't share content across the sites. Um, if I engaged on the site on the left, site one, and then I went to site two, uh, my site, my visit started completely from scratch. I didn't even, the website completely forgot about me. So they weren't able to share their presentation, their content. So their mar own marketing organization suffered from lack of efficiencies. Then in terms of value add, they weren't able to stitch together the, the user journey between the sites. So just pure efficiencies in sharing content and then knowing that if you had encountered or engaged with me on one site, I can personalize your experience on another provides a lot of initial synergy for that organization. So with this in mind, with this issue in, in, uh, in mind here, what they did was first centralize on Sitecore, right? So they took all their three web properties and migrated them all to Sitecore. So here, right, so it's a central location for all of their digital experiences. The delivery and optimization of the digital experience and the content there was hosted and managed through Sitecore. So that means now they're sharing content and presentation. So what's working on one site can easily be used to work on another. One persona could be used to work on a different persona. They're able to gain some synergy and efficiencies across uh, their organization that way. And then additionally, the customer data is shared between all the instances. So that where you were talking before about 
co cohesive and consistent experiences from one device to another, from one web property to another, they're able to start stitching that together. Uh, so there gains a lot of super efficiencies. And this is just digital. Where this really takes it up another notch is that they already had Salesforce in-house. So they took Sitecore and they uh, connected it with Salesforce. And by doing this, they have efficiency through sharing their marketing assets so that the assets that are shown on an email that might be automated through Salesforce or the content that goes out through an SMS message through Salesforce um, is the same kind of content that they'll see on the landing pages of the website. It's cohesive and consistent across every single customer touch point. So, th which is just allows for a really great scale and you know lack of cognitive di dissonance, which we know affects conversion rates. Then uh, when you talk through optimization of personalized communications, this is where they really see efficiencies. So messages are coming out of Salesforce on the left and they're going into the customer. And then from that point, uh, they're getting personalized message to the individual right out of what's coming into Salesforce. Then that email is then driving them to a consistent user experience on, on Sitecore. The landing page has the same assets, has the same messages as they go through there and they engage on the digital properties that are in, hosted on Sitecore there, they're able to get that cohesive and really consistent personalized experience. Then Sitecore is sharing that information and that data and analytics with Salesforce. So they're consistently updating and, and reinforcing this process so that the next uh, communication that goes out to this customer will be even more personalized, will be even more optimized to consistently get to that lower, how can we get closer and closer to a more optimized strategy here? So this really represents what the capabilities are. And I wanted to put this slide here because you'll see here that you take the Sitecore's content management solution and you take the content, the images, and the customer data. And through our Connect API, we're, we're sharing that data with Salesforce. And then Salesforce is sharing their web analytics, social media data, and mobile outreach right into Sitecore. So you're really gaining the best of both uh, efficiencies here. And there's no more data silos between assets that might be in Salesforce and then uh, landing pages that might be created on Sitecore. So it really gives you that next great step. Uh, and I know uh, from a Blue Wolf perspective as well, there's a sense of this personalization maturity, right? We're not all gonna be at this part of like, we're, you know, we're doing the best personalization across all our channels at the, the right from the onset. So this customer is a great example of one that started the process. So now they're starting in this process of putting together the pieces to do a, a full-blown personalization program now that they have all their data in, uh, in the right spots. And I know this is something that's pretty uh, big on you as well, right, Ryan? I know personalization maturity is something you deal with a lot consulting with customers. It is. And just before I, I transition over to to a tool that we want to show you guys today about how to manage and, and measure your level of maturity. I just love this story that you just told, Mike. I think we all can kind of think about the healthcare systems that we we live in today. And you go you go on websites and you might be looking, hey, you're expecting, right? And so you're looking at websites for OB care or you're going into then pediatrics because you need to get a pediatrician or whether it's family medicine. And it's such a disconnected experience. I just think this is such a huge opportunity to really um, disrupt a, a pretty bifurcated industry. And, and this is super exciting. So thanks for sharing that. Um, like you said, we, we have this digital maturity curve that we love to give to our customers as we start these conversations. Because a lot of our customers are like, I quite honestly, I don't even know where I'm at on a barometer as far as um, our organization versus others. Well, the first thing I would tell you is the only organization you need to be measuring yourself against is yourself. That doesn't mean that the competition isn't out there and they're not trying to push up this maturity curve, but you need to not boil the ocean. You need to say, hey, what is manageable for our organization? Where does our organization truly sit? And have that realistic conversation internally to say, how do we understand where we are so that we can achieve our goals going forward? But what I will tell you as you look at this maturity curve, most of the customers that we're talking to are in that gray area, the automated and integrated area. And believe it or not, there are some that are still in the traditional red area. As you start to think about um, a lot of the capabilities that we've been talking about today, it's really moving out of that automated light gray and into that integrated dark gray. This isn't even saying, hey, 
all right, Blue Elf and Psychor, you're talking about these things that are just extremely mature um, in the way that they come together, that they're, you're thinking they're up in that, uh, that, that light blue area, and that's not the case at all. You really can start to chisel away at this um, one action at a time, um, one investment at a time, making sure that you're putting in the right approach um, to make sure that you're getting there. And, and the first thing is making sure that you're investing in the right technology stack and, and then also investing in the right people that are going to help you be successful. Absolutely. So I would add, that, um, go ahead, Mike. Sorry. No, I was just going to, with that slide, I think that's a great, you know, I think, you know, your point there of most customers, you know, most companies that I engage with today, they are really in that gray state. I think where the market is seeing the the realization that these marketing strategies are, are impactful, they're relevant, they're going to work. Uh, it's just a matter of, like I think the way you put it there, the only the only customer, your only company you really need to measure yourself against is yourself. I, I really like how you said that because it really rings true. Like you need to be smarter marketers. You can throw um uh, you could throw people at the problem, you could throw budget at the problem, but I really think at the end of the day, it's really a smart plan that's going to help you overcome that real big hurdle, uh, which is you know getting to that next step of personalization. So really, you know, every company they're they're on their different part, right? Some of the customers, some companies are further in, um, it may be in an integrated approach, right? Maybe some are still in the traditional approach, uh, but everyone's on a different phase of their journey, and, and it's it's crazy to assume that you know it would be impossible for me to give a blanket statement about what every company should do. Uh, but I really, I think I could distill it down to really like three key points here, which is the first thing is optimizing a operational and resource efficiency, right? So we know that that, that scale of channels that we, we saw in the first slide is only gonna keep growing, right? And we need to be able to jump on the next emerging channel, not be afraid of it and actually be, you know, trailblazers. When that, when that, uh, when that channel emerges, is be the first one to market there. Show, show, some, value, show some value in that uh, going forward. And second is extract the actionable data that, that actually works for you, right? So we've discussed, like, it's not a question of whether you have the data, like you showed, it's a question of, is it actionable or not? So it's a matter here of getting actionable data, getting actionable insights from all the data you're collecting. And then the last one here, and it, this is the big one, right? It's be, you know, be prepared for the future. This is a, you know, it's kind of a catch all here, but you know, you, you want to be a trailblazer in your industry. You don't want to shy away from the next channel, the next technology, you want to embrace it. Because as we've seen, the the companies that embrace it are working, are do the best results here. And I really think if you really want to encapsulate being prepared for you know the future in general, the most successful implementations I've seen of Sitecore are with companies that actually reach out uh, in those blue phases and they've partnered with the a qualified solution partner, right? Like someone like yourself at Blue Wolf, and you these companies are using you leverage the years of experience, creativity, and know how that a solution partner like Blue Wolf provides and you put it to work for you. That's probably the easiest way I've seen to actually overcome some of these hurdles is to take, uh, you know, really partner with one of these companies and take their insights and know how to the next for you to take to the next level. Yeah, not to not to quote an old adage, but you don't always have to recreate the wheel, right? Leverage exactly. the experience of the marketplace. And again, this really comes back to uh, we keep using this term, an integrated marketing stack, right? And you're seeing companies all over the world investing and consuming and acquiring uh, technologies that they're trying to integrate into their stack to solve these unique problems. And it's it's one of those things that I think Salesforce and Sitecore saw early on, and that's why they are where they are. So thank you, Mike, for... Uh, giving us your time and your expertise today, and, and most importantly, your perspective on how our customers that are actually going through these challenges can really stop to think about what's next and how do we achieve these um, these same kind of expectations and goals and results um, from their investments. Um, with that being said, I do want to highlight that every year, sales uh, Blue Wolf puts out a state of Salesforce report, and this is a thorough um, research-based document, or, or uh, really it's a publication that takes um, over 2,500 Salesforce customers and asks them how they're using Salesforce and Salesforce um, 
integration partners like Sitecore and understanding what are the trends that they're seeing um, in the clouds that they're investing in. Where are they looking to spend budget? Where do they see the next big trend coming out of? What things should other customers who are using Salesforce should be thinking about um, as they're continuing to make bigger and bigger investments into this platform that is the Salesforce ecosystem? So if you're interested, I highly encourage you to uh, download a copy of the report. You can get it at bluewolf.com slash SOSF. And with that, Taylor, we welcome you back. I know that you said there might be some questions here at the end for uh, Mike and myself. So would love to would love to answer some of those. Thank you guys. That was incredibly insightful conversation. And we really appreciate you both taking the time today. So we've had a bunch of questions come in. Um, as I mentioned, we'll see how many we can get through today, probably three to four um, before our time's up. And then we will be responding to each and every question after the webinar. Um, okay, first question. So you guys talked about um, unifying and defining um, a single source of truth for customer data. What are some best practices in deciding which system should be that source of truth? Great question, I'll take that one, Taylor. So as we start to think about this from a, a viewpoint and a lens of Salesforce, we really recommend that that service cloud console be that single pane of glass uh, that you understand and know your customer in. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, it's a nice UI that brings together all of those data points. Two, Salesforce was designed with integrations in mind, knowing that you are going to bring other systems, whether that's point of sale, ERP, or it could be like a site core integration and integrating and relating that data together in a way that's easy to view and easy to action in that console. So from our perspective, Service Cloud really should be that brain, it's the hub and then all of the other areas in, of engagement that you're, you're experiencing with your customers are those spokes that go around that hub. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, thank you, Ryan. So next question. Marketers understand the value of personalization, but marketing isn't the only team that's making technology decisions. So should we be pushing IT for closer alignment so that our team's needs are heard? What do you recommend? I'll grab that one. Uh, I would absolutely. I think you know the old uh, the saying of the CIO and the CMO don't get along. I think that's uh, we need that needs to change. If it hasn't changed in the organization, it should be you know one of the first things you do. I, I find that the companies that do the best personalization practices or programs are the ones that really you know they they uh, buy into the spirit. They they take it from a people process and organization top down. Uh, so marketing and IT has to work together, you know, it, from, as a marketer myself and stuff, it's our responsibility to provide really good business requirements, provide that to the to the, our technologists on the other side of the house. And we need to start working way more collaboratively uh, than we have in the past, for sure. Great. No, thank you. Um, this next question here, I know is a question a lot of people are, are struggling with. Um, we got a few questions related to this topic. Um, so with new channels popping up all the time, like you guys showed on that first slide, how do we make smarter decisions about where we're investing so that we're not just chasing all these new channels that may get a lot of attention, but aren't actually paying off over time? I think that's a great question, right? And, and it, again, I think it comes back to this recurring theme of this webinar, and that is creating an integrated MarTech stack that can actually adapt to those new technologies as they come out. If you start to look at a lot of these new technologies that are out there, they all come with open APIs. So what system is going to allow you to integrate, again, that data strategy that we were talking about with the content strategy in an open way? And so as we stop to think about Journey Builder, that orchestration tool that stitches those things together, Salesforce really becomes that system of engagement that really allows you to stop having to think about how do I integrate a whole new channel into my stack instead of saying, hey, you know what? We can develop and be very agile into integrating into those open APIs and already deploying our content that we have in our systems to those channels whether or not those channels are gonna become, let's say main stakes channels for people, for source of engagement. But what does it allow you to do? It allows you to be the forefront and the forerunner into those channels to say, hey, 
you know what, at least my brand is trying and doing something different and getting there faster than anybody else, regardless of the payout. Absolutely, thank you. Um, okay, let's get in. I think we have time for one more question here. What is the most common mistake that you see marketers making when they're developing a personalization strategy? I think I'll, I'll grab that one too. Uh, I, this is a good one. You know, I think, you know, uh, we showed that personalization maturity model before and, you know, we, we talked about how a lot of companies are still in the red. I mean, most 15% of marketers feel confident with personalization. You know, I'd probably, you know, very little are actually doing personalization. And I think the, the process has to start with people and your, your people process and success first, right? So I find that the companies that do really good job at personalization are the people are the companies that approach it in a in a proper manner. So they identify who on their team is going to do per, uh, is responsible for personalization. What customers are they going to talk to? In what way? How are they going to learn from it? And then finally, the big thing here: what does success looks like? Look like is success lowering the amount of you know uh, calls to the phone bag? through relevant information on the website is success ROI is success. What is success of that personalization tactic and how can you put that in a quantifiable way? And uh, most organizations fall short because they feel they're doing personalization in a vacuum. I'm doing tactics and I don't know if it's wor valuable, worth it or not. And if you don't put the people, the process and the, your success or your goals first, uh, your, the technology isn't going to help. One thing I'll just add to that real quick, Taylor is, it also, you need to stop and think, do we have the right roles? The modern marketing organization is transforming and traditional marketing roles are evolving. So you have roles like audience development and personalization development, roles that you've never heard of in the past. So it's really exciting to see the marketing landscape changing and the new opportunities for our customers to really become bleeding edge in the industry. So it's, that's why I love my job every day. It's, it's just different and towards us. So thank you again, Mike, for all the insight today. It's a real pleasure doing this with you. And Taylor, thanks for being a, a stellar MC. Yeah. Thanks for having <laughs> well, thank me. Thank you guys. Great thank time. you guys so much um, for being here. Uh, I know that I, I hope that everyone here on the call today um, got something insightful and helpful out of this discussion. Um, just closing off here, if you want to learn more about uh, about Blue Wolf and, or about Sitecore, please visit our websites. Um, we can help guide you to the right place um, there, and you can, you can talk to experts, learn more about what we do, learn more about the technology. Um, and yeah, we're just excited to see this partnership continue to grow and all the, all the exciting things to come ahead uh, for our marketers. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>